Hey guys, uh, today I would like to show you a technique that will allow you to turn off your uh, electric fans during startup, but still have them operate in all other normal conditions once the car's running. I, I had a car the other day that we were tuning, uh, got through the cold start, did some idle tuning, whatever, shut the car down, and, and then we were uh, ready to try our first hot start. And right before I asked uh, this gentleman to crank the car up, he said, um, actually, I forgot to tell you something. This car has a problem that because the fans are running when the car is cranking, uh, my battery is just a little bit weak. It's a separate issue, whatever. But so the battery is kind of weak and it'll end up killing, uh, basically just killing the battery between trying to crank the starter and having the fans run. So he said, is there any way we can turn the fans off uh, so they just will not run during cranking, but they fire elsewhere? Uh, and there absolutely is a way to do this. I looked on YouTube last night. I tried to find a video about this already. I figured it was out there. Couldn't find one. So I want to show you a technique here that you can use. Uh, it's real simple, but it'll solve that problem for you. So first thing we're going to do here is I'm just going to open up uh, just a canned file. Doesn't really matter. And out of the box uh, with these Holly Terminator X systems, when you go to the system ICF and your basic IO, this is where your sort of canned fan control is located. So the way Holly works is it's got uh, two different fan outputs available. Um, some people just use one, even if it's a dual fan, they might have them both going off a single relay. Um, some people like to use two different fans on two different relays and have independent control. But regardless, for each fan that you're going to use, you turn it on. You have the temperature that will cause the fan to kick on. So if you exceed this on temperature, fan turns on, and then it's ultimately waiting for the, <clears throat> the engine to cool back down until it falls below this temperature and then the fan goes back off. Uh, and then you have different temperature range for the second fan and you can control these temperatures. Uh, the other thing is that there's an optional checkbox if you are using air conditioning that will uh, force the fan to always be on if the AC is kicked on. So that's kind of the, the, standard, uh, the standard logic. So using this there is no way to prevent it from kicking on during cranking or even just with key on power so the way you do this number one is you need to turn off fan one and fan two here we're not going to use this canned logic anymore and instead what we're going to do is create a, uh, some custom outputs so we're going to go up into the uh, io icf go to our outputs and we're going to go ahead we'll, we'll do a two-speed setup like like they make available. So we'll do uh, custom fan one, and then we'll name the other one custom fan two. And <clears throat> we're gonna enable both of these. On the type, uh, you could be running pulse width modulation, but that's a whole other topic. We're not gonna get into that. If you're trying to simulate the standard logic that we're replacing, that would be a ground side trigger. So you would wanna select ground for both of these. Okay. Now you go to configure and this is where you're determining what has to occur in order for the fan to kick on for this output to, to be enabled. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down here and we're going to add two different triggers. Okay. So the first thing is we want the car not, or we want the fans not to run while the car is, is not running. RPMs is your easy way to do that. If you don't have RPMs, car's not running. If you do have RPMs, the car is running. So what I like to do to avoid cranking completely is go look up in your spark area real quick, go to your cranking parameters, and look at what you have this RPM set to. Because until the car reaches above this RPMs, it's not considered running. So you're still in crank mode. So Again, this is a stock tune. I'm not going to get into what these numbers are, but whatever you have this set to 400 RPMs in this case, that's a trigger point you want to use. So going back to this, this output that we created and going back to configure that, our first condition is this output will activate when your RPM is above that number. So that alone is going to make it so that it won't have to, uh, run until the car starts. But remember, this is just an output. It, it doesn't have to be used for fans. This is just a generic output. So we also need the temperature control like we had uh, in the stock one. You don't want the fan running all the time. The point is to wait till it, it gets to a certain temp, kick on, and then possibly kick back off again uh, when it when it cools back down. So we also that's why we set this number to two right here. So we're going to have this first trigger 
and we're going to set a second one where the coolant temp has to get above whatever. I'll set this to 180 degrees. Okay. Now, on this temperature portion of this, we also still want it to shut back off if the engine cools down. And to do that, underneath this second, uh, this second trigger, we'll check this box, and then we'll specify the temperature here we want it to kick back off at. I'll set something like 172. Now, the last thing you want to do is you have to set this to all. If you set this, if you leave this at single, the fan will kick on when either of these two conditions are met. Therefore, if the car's already up at temp when you're trying to start it, then this would be ignored and the fan would run anyways, and that's the whole point of what we're doing. So you need to make sure this is set to all, so you have to be above a certain temp and have to be above 400 RPMs or whatever that, that running threshold is. So this configuration right here will make, uh, make this fan work the way you want it to, for the most part. So that's fan one kicking on at 180, turning back off at 172. We'll go back. We'll go to custom fan two, configure, do basically the same thing here. We're gonna set this to two. We'll set the RPM above 400. And we'll set the coolant temp for this one a little bit higher. We'll just say 190 and kick it back off if the temps fall back below 182. Set this to all also. So this gets us at least to that point where you've, you've kind of done what the factory logic is doing with one exception. If you have air conditioning also, then it's, it's best practice to always have the fans running when the AC kicks on so that uh, you can keep the system cool. I had a car one time uh, that I bought that it just kind of had a small electric fan on it. And the very first time I got the AC charged when I bought this car, I was driving with my wife summertime. Uh, we started the car leaving the grocery store and there was this huge cloud of smoke coming from the hood and I freaked out. And ultimately it was the, the air conditioning just blowing off a bunch of pressure, which I later found out was literally just a cooling issue. That's all it was. I took it to a shop to take a look at it. I'm not, you know, an expert in air conditioning stuff. And they said, man, I don't think there's anything wrong with your system. I just think you need a bigger fan. Sure enough, change the fan, refill the system, no problem sent. So anyways, I, I'm getting off track. So this gets you this far. Now, if you also have air conditioning, there's one more thing you definitely need to do. So we're going to go back to our first fan. And we're going to set this switched input triggers to one. And we're going to tell this to activate when the AC kick is enabled. So anytime your AC kick launches, which should happen if you wired everything up correctly with the Holly uh, for your air conditioning, then that'll also cause the fan to go on. But it'll only do that if you set it here. So we're basically saying if, if either the AC kick is on or all of this is how we want it to be. Either of these conditions can cause the, the fan to kick on. And that's kind of your, your final configuration for this stuff. Uh, if you want both fans to kick on with AC, we'll do the same thing here. Set that to one. Tell it that when the AC kick is enabled or these conditions are met, the fan needs to come on. And it really is kind of that simple. Um, the only difference is if you, if you are using a pulse width modulated fan, um, you might want to do things in a different way where you're not really worried about the coolant temp as like a hard on off necessarily. The whole point of pulse width modulation is you can have some kind of a ramp. So a lot of times it'll start ramping in well before, uh, you know, you get to this kind of a temperature and that way it has a real soft, smooth, uh, you know, smooth ramp. So anyways, uh, that's how you set this up. Now, from a wiring perspective, if you guys are really doing everything from scratch and getting this set up for the first time, I just want to quickly uh, jump over to Holly's diagram. So this is just their standard um, harness uh, user manual for the 79 to 93 Mustang harness, what was previously in the 937F and 943F kits. Uh, so I'm going to scroll down here to this right here. And as a reminder, on the J1B connector going into the Holly, you have all of your, your inputs and outputs right here. Um, the outputs that are set up from the factory for fan control are gonna be B11 and B12. So uh, also looking at those for B11 and B12, so you know what color they are, 
Let me jump over here and get to the diagram. And scroll down. Okay, so B11 is going to be your gray with red stripe. B12 is gray with yellow stripe. Something you probably need to know. And those are going to be on your I.O. connector. It's, a, it's an 8-pin plug that looks like this guy right here. So B11 and B12 are, are the two uh, output wires you're going to use for this. And in order for this to, uh, to do what you want, you need to make sure you go to your pin mapping. After you've set up everything else we just did, you need to go to your outputs. And you need to take away electric fan 1 and 2 that you see are on those factory B12 and B11 pins. And since we're not using that anymore, we're using our customs. And if you don't do this, this is not going to work. So you need to make sure you're doing it this way. Um, so get your custom fans on here, get that stuff out. And on your inputs, you need to make sure that your AC kick is in place on whichever pin you want to put it on. This is all how they uh, intended for you to wire that stuff on the, on the base kits for the Terminator X. Uh, so make sure your AC kick is on. So now we've got our custom outputs created. We've gone back into the pin mapping and we've assigned those to the appropriate pins. Now the last piece of this, and this is only for the guys with AC, uh, going back to the standard basic I.O. functionality, we, we have this IAC kick right here. Uh, this you still probably want to have on uh, for this to function all as intended. I don't know what the numbers are going to need to be, but you do want to offset when the AC kicks on. You need that kick to come up so it doesn't you know, it doesn't have a, a lull in RPMs if the car's idling. There's some other ways to do this with advanced tables I'll probably talk about in a different video, but uh, this is probably something you'll still want in place also, as is this piece of the functionality that will shut down your air conditioning if you go ultimately heavy throttle or full throttle, uh, or if your car starts to overheat. Personally, 235 is too, too hot in my book for uh, still running the AC. I usually go somewhere around 210 or 212. Um, I know some cars run a little warmer. Um, I do my best to try to keep these, these engines running under 200 if I can. Um, most of the time that's not an issue, even in hot climates, whatever. Just have to size all the cooling uh, components correctly. Uh, and this max TPS, I'll usually raise this up a little higher to somewhere around 75% throttle before it'll, it'll kick the AC off. Uh, so these settings are really all you need to do uh, to get this, get this functioning. You're no longer gonna have your fans running at startup. Uh, but other than that, you have full control over it that you had here, and you solve your problem. So guys, I uh, hope this helps. Let me know if you have any problems. Good luck. Godspeed.